Good morning, Mr. Dald is here with your Unit 4, Chapter 13, Section 4 reading. As you can see, this gentleman here is King Henry VIII. That is who we are going to be reading about. So again, Section 4, Reformation Ideas Spread. Your focus question for this section is how did the Reformation bring about two different religious paths in Europe? Reformation Ideas Spread. Throughout Europe, Catholic monarchs and Catholic Church fought back against the Protestant challenge by taking steps to reform the church and to restore its spiritual leadership of the Christian world. Still, Protestant ideas continued to spread. An explosion of Protestant sects. As the Reformation continued, hundreds of new Protestant sects or religious groups that had broken away from an established church sprang up. Many of these followed variations on the teachings of Luther, Calvin, and Zwingli. Some sects, however, had ideas that were even more radical, such as rejecting infant baptism. Infants, they argued, are too young to understand what it means to accept the Christian faith. They became known as the Anabaptists. A few Anabaptist sects sought radical change as radical social change as well. Some wanted to abolish private property. Others sought to speed up the coming of God's day of judgment by violent means. When radical Anabaptists took over the city of Munster in Germany, even Luther advised his supporters to join Catholics in suppressing the threat to the traditional order. Most Anabaptists, however, were peaceful. They called for religious toleration and separation of church and state. Despite harsh persecution, these groups influenced Protestant thinking in many countries. Today, the Baptists, Mennonites, and Amish all trace their religious ancestry to the Anabaptists. Who are the Anabaptists is your checkpoint question. Take a moment to answer that and move on. The English Reformation. In England, religious leaders like John Wycliffe had called for church reform as early as the 1300s. By the 1520s, some English clergy were exploring Protestant ideas. The break with the Catholic Church, however, was the work not of religious leaders, but of King Henry VIII. Henry VIII seeks an annulment. At first, Henry VIII stood firmly against the Protestant revolt. The Pope even awarded him the title of Defender of the Faith for a pamphlet that he wrote denouncing Luther. In 1527, however, an issue arose that set Henry at odds with the Church. After 18 years of marriage, Henry and his Spanish wife, Catherine of Aragon, had only one surviving child, Mary Tudor. Henry felt that England's stability depended on his having a male heir. He had already fallen in love with a young noblewoman named Anne Boleyn, who served the queen. He hoped that if he married her, she would bear him a son. Because Catholic law does not permit divorce, he asked the Pope to annul or cancel his marriage. Popes had annulled royal marriages before, but this Pope refused. He did not want to offend the Holy Roman Emperor Charles IV, who was Catherine's nephew. Breaking with the Church Henry was furious. Spurred on by his advisors, many of whom leaned towards Protestantism, he decided to take over the English church. Guided by his chancellor, Thomas Cromwell, he had Parliament pass a series of laws. They took the English church from the Pope's control and placed it under Henry's rule. At the same time, he appointed Thomas Grammer, Archbishop of the new church. Grammer annulled the king's marriage, and in 1533, Henry married Anne Boleyn. Soon, Anne gave birth to a daughter, Elizabeth. In 1534, Parliament passed an act of supremacy, making Henry the only supreme head on earth of the Church of England. Many loyal Catholics refused to accept the act of supremacy and were executed for treason. Among them was the great English humanist Sir Thomas More, who served in Henry's government but tried to resign in protest. More was later canonized or recognized as a saint by the Catholic Church. Strengthening the Church of England. Between 1536 and 1540, royal officials investigated Catholic convents and monasteries. Claiming that they were centers of immorality, Henry ordered them closed. He then confiscated or seized their lands and wealth. Henry shrewdly granted some of these lands to nobles and other high-ranking citizens. 
He thus secured their support for the Anglican Church, as the new Church of England was called. Despite these actions, Henry was not a religious radical. He rejected most Protestant doctrines. Aside from breaking away from Rome and allowing use of the English Bible, he kept most Catholic forms of worship. Religious Turmoil When Henry died in 1547, he had only one surviving son, despite having married six times. Nine-year-old Edward VI inherited the throne. The young king and his advisors were devout Protestants and took steps to make England a truly Protestant country. Under Edward, Parliament passed new laws bringing Protestant reforms to England. Thomas Cramer drew up the Protestant Book of Common Prayer, which became required reading in all of the church, country's church services. Though it outlined a moderate form of Protestant service, it sparked uprisings. These uprisings were harshly suppressed. When Edward died in his teens, his half-sister, Mary Tudor, became queen. She was determined to return England to the Catholic faith. Under Queen Mary, hundreds of English Protestants, including Archbishop Cranmer, were burned at the stake for heresy. The, Elizab the Elizabethan Settlement On Mary's death in 1558, the throne passed to 25-year-old Elizabeth, the daughter of Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn. For years, Elizabeth had survived court intrigues, including the religious swings under Edward and Mary. As queen, Elizabeth had to determine the future of the Church of England. Moving cautiously at first, she slowly enforced a series of reforms that over time came to be called the Elizabethan Settlement. The Queen's policies were a compromise or acceptable middle ground between Protestant and Catholic practices. The Church of England preserved much Catholic ritual and it kept the hierarchy of bishop and archbishops. Unlike Henry, the Queen did not call herself supreme head of the Church, but she reaffirmed that the monarch was the supreme governor of spiritual matters in England. At the same time, Elizabeth restored a version of the Book of Common Prayer, accepted moderate Protestant doctrine, and allowed English to replace the Latin in church services. Her sensible compromises, which satisfied most Catholics and Protestants, largely ended decades of religious turmoil. During, her, during a long reign, Elizabeth used all her skills to restore unity to England. Even while keeping many Catholic traditions, she made England a firmly Protestant nation. After her death, England faced new religious storms, but it escaped the endless religious wars that tore apart France and many other European states during the 1500s. Checkpoint. Why was the Church of England established? The Catholic Reformation. As the Protestant Reformation swept across Northern Europe, a vigorous reform movement took hold within the Catholic Church. Led by Pope Paul III, it was known as the Catholic Reformation, or the Counter-Reformation. During the 1530s and 1540s, the Pope set out to revive the moral authority of the Church and roll back the Protestant tide. He also appointed reformers to end corruption within the papacy itself. They and their successors led the Catholic Reformation for the rest of the century. Council of Trent. To establish the direction that reform should take, the Pope called the Council of Trent in 1545. Led by Italian Cardinal Carlo Borremio, the Council met off and on for almost 20 years. The Council reaffirmed the traditional Catholic views that Protestants had challenged. It declared that salvation comes through faith and good works. According to the Council, the Bible while a major source of religious truth is not the only source. The council also took steps to end abuses in the church. It provided stiff penalties for worldliness and corruption among the clergy. It also established schools to create a better educated clergy who could challenge Protestant teachings. Empowering the Inquisition Pope Paul strengthened the Inquisition to fight Protestantism. As you have read, the Inquisition was a church court set up during the Middle Ages. The Inquisition used secret testimony, torture, and execution to root out heresy. It also prepared the Index of Forbidden Books, a list of works considered too immoral or irreligious for Catholics to read. This list included books by Luther and Calvin, as well as earlier works by Petrarch and other humanists. 
founding the Jesuits. In 1540, the Pope recognized a new religious order, the Society of Jesus, or Jesuits. The order was founded by Ignatius of Loyola, a Spanish knight raised in the crusading tradition. After his leg was shattered in a battle, he found comfort reading about saints who had overcome mental and physical torture. Vowing to become a soldier of God, Ignatius drew up a strict program for the Jesuits. It included spiritual and moral discipline, rigorous religious training, and absolute obedience to the church. Led by Ignatius, the Jesuits embarked on a crusade to defend and spread the Catholic faith worldwide. To further Catholic cause, Jesuits became advisors to Catholic rulers, helping them combat heresy in their lands. They set up schools that taught humanist and Catholic beliefs and enforced discipline and obedience. Daring Jesuits slipped into Protestant lands in disguise to minister to Catholics. Jesuit missionaries spread their Catholic faith to distant lands, including Asia, Africa, and the Americas. Teresa of Avila As the Catholic Reformation spread, many Catholics experienced renewed feelings of intense faith. Teresa of Avila symbolized this renewal. Born into a wealthy Spanish family, Teresa entered a convent in her youth. Finding convent routine not strict enough, she established her own order of nuns. They lived in isolation, eating and sleeping very little, and dedicated themselves to prayer and meditation. Impressed by her spiritual life, her superiors in the church asked Teresa to reorganize and reform Spanish convents and monasteries. Teresa was widely honored for her work, and after her death, the church canonized her. Her spiritual writings rank among the most important Christian texts of her time and are still widely read today. Legacy of Catholic Reformation By 1600, the majority of Europeans remained Catholic. Tireless Catholic reformers like Francis de Sales in France had succeeded in bringing back Protestant converts. Moreover, renewed piety found expression in literature and art. Across Catholic Europe, charity flourished and church abuses were reduced. Still, Protestantism had gained a major foothold on the continent. The Reformation and the Catholic Reformation stirred up intense feelings and debate. Religious conflict played into heated disagreements about government, which would erupt into war throughout much of Europe. At the end, Europe would remain, and still remains today, divided by differing interpretations of Christianity. Checkpoint. What was the outcome of the Catholic Reformation? Widespread Persecution During this period of heightened and religious passion, persecution was widespread. Both Catholic and Protestant fostered intolerance, and persecuted radical sects like the Anabaptists, people they thought were witches and Jews. Conducting Witch Hunts By 1450 and 15, 1750, tens of thousands of women and men died as victims of witch hunts. Those accused of being witches or agents of the devil were usually women. Most victims of the witch hunts died in the German states, Switzerland, and France, all centers of religious conflict. When the wars of religion came to an end, the persecution of witches also declined. Scholars have offered various reasons for the persecution, but most agree that it had to do with people's twin beliefs in Christianity and magic. Most people believe that among them were witches who practiced magical deeds, often with the aid of the devil. Thus, witches were seen as anti-Christian. Because witches often behaved in non-traditional ways, Many people accused of witchcraft were often social outcasts, such as beggars. Midwives and herbalists were also targeted. Persecuting Jews For many Jews in Italy, the early Renaissance had been a time of relative prosperity. While Spain had expelled its Jews in 1492, Italy allowed them to remain. Still, pressure remained strong on Jews to convert. In 1516, Venice ordered Jews to live in a separate quarter of the city called the Ghetto. Other Italian cities soon followed. During the Reformation, restrictions on Jews increased. At first, Luther hoped that Jews would be converted to his teachings. When they did not convert, he called for them to be expelled from Christian lands and for their synagogues to be burned. In time, some German princes did expel Jews. In the 1550s, Pope Paul IV placed added restrictions on Jews. 
Emperor Charles V, who supported toleration of Jews in the Holy Roman Empire, banned them from Spanish territories and the new American colonies. From the early 1500s on, many Jews migrated to Mediterranean parts of the Ottoman Empire and to the Netherlands. Checkpoint. Why were Jews and other people prosecuted? Please take a moment and answer that question. That brings us to the end of Chapter 13, Section 4. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.